We know technology can be intimidating. Technology is constantly changing and that in itself can be overwhelming. There is always something new, like a gadget app or tool to learn, but we want to help connect you to solutions and hopefully make technology less intimidating. But that's why we're here. Each month we'll answer any questions you've got about tech. You can send us your anonymous questions and OIT's Yasmin Yahya and Jesse Plaza will do our best to help you out. Then we'll share our expertise with you on the last Friday of each month. So, Jesse, are you ready to get started? Yeah, let's do it. <laughs> okay. Uh, so, Jesse, can you tell me what really happens if I don't properly eject a USB? Oh, geez, this is one of those things that, you know, everything, everything from your iPad to your Mac to your old Windows PC to that really, really old DOS system that got only USB from like an upgrade because it was from the mid 90s. It, it, it's it's this whole thing. We've always been told you have to like hit the eject button first. And if you rip it out, bad things are going to happen. But at the same time, we have all ripped out a USB and uh, I don't think that many people have had it really die on them. So what's really up with that? Well, hypothetically, you could end up with corrupted files. So um, the way USB kind of does things is it caches writes to a drive. So uh, it speeds things up by saying, hey, I am going to write this change to this file right now. It maybe doesn't necessarily do it all at once. So that if you're like copying 10,000 different pictures onto a flash drive and uh, yeah, you, you want it to go in a nice orderly pace, it's maybe not making those changes one by one. It's doing different parts at different times so that it can be faster overall. And if you were to say rip out the drive while it was in the middle of doing one of those steps, it may have copied file number one, but it didn't finish copying file number one, even though you're on like file number three or number four. And so file number one is really only in a half workable state and it gets corrupted. Um, this is kind of a, a thing that can lead to data loss, obviously. Um, these days, you know, Windows and Mac OS are a lot smarter about that sort of thing. So most of the time, if you don't have something actively copying over, like you don't see the thing saying copying five seconds left or whatever, it's probably okay. If your USB is just sitting there, you've plugged it in, you haven't done anything with it, or you've copied over all your files and they've actually finished, like the UI has told you it's done, it's probably fine. But at the same time, yeah, if you want to be safe about not getting your files corrupted, rare as though it may be, it's good to hit that eject button. Yeah, don't be like me. That actually did happen to me, oh my uh, God. like okay. over a decade ago. <laughs> uh, and <laughs> It was for a high school project and I lost all my data and my teacher said, did you eject it properly? And I said, what, what do you mean eject it properly? Oh, no. I didn't, I didn't know. I was not raised by tech savvy people. So, um, <laughs> so again, don't be like me. <laughs> I've killed many a flash drive, not for those reasons, but just other unrelated things. Like I have a little graveyard, including the first flash drive I ever got, which was 256 megabytes. It was $40 and I was small. So that was a lot of money and mm. uh, good times. It's very dead. Anyway, shall we uh, go on to our next question? I see we've got one here. For sure. Uh, All right. Oh, go ahead. Yes, me. Can you keep your Steadwords email? I'm reading it as it's written. Can you keep your Steadwords email after graduation or do you lose access? So yes, we have answered this question before, but I think because it is about to be graduation season again, we should definitely answer it um, and bring this back up because it's important. So alumni retain access to their accounts for a specific amount of time. And since this person is specifically asking about email, the answer is that you'll only have access to your email for about a year after you graduate. And this will include apps like your calendar, Google Drive, Box. Um, so our advice to you is to use Google Takeouts. You can save all of the items that you have worked on for years and making sure that um, you know nothing is attached to your email that you won't mind losing after a year or so. Subscriptions to, I don't know, Netflix, HelloFresh, um, anything like that. So you can make sure that those financial documents are not just lost in your expired email account. Um, but not everything gets lost after a year. You will actually keep your username. Um, that will never expire. And that means you can still log into My Hilltop for as long as My Hilltop exists. And that means you can access 
uh, like tax documents. You can request a transcript, for example. Um, so again, you will use your, you will, excuse me, you will lose your email after a year. Um, so soon to be alumni, look out for an email from us OIT explaining all of this. Um, and that'll come out close to the end of the year. You'll also get updates sent to your St. Ed's email and your personal email that we have on file uh, that will explain this a little bit as the expiration date gets closer and closer. Yeah, hopefully um, you won't be blindsided by this one because we're really gonna spam you as, as that expiration comes up. Uh, I, I've seen it dozens of times where uh, an alumni managed to not move anything off their account. It came time for their account to close. Maybe they didn't need it every day, so it was a couple of weeks or months or even in some cases, hmm, excuse me, over a year afterwards. And, you know, they had been gone so long, their account was gone. There was no more email for us to return to them. So uh, it's, it's definitely important to uh, keep that Keep that transferred out and the Google Takeout feature is really great. Takeout.google.com. If you've still got access to your email, you can move it all to a personal Google account. Super easy. Right. And I think it's a, a good use case for spamming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, when we spam you, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I think that's it for this month's Ask OIT. Uh, remember that you can send us a question uh, about literally anything tech related robots uh your personal accounts like icloud um we want you to pick our brains and to my fellow colleagues they are paying me to answer non-work related questions give me non-work related tech questions this is like my favorite block of time at the end of every month uh just just ask me whatever you want if it's tangentially technology related we're happy to answer it and between our episodes of Ask OIT, you can follow us on Twitter and Instagram. That's at S-E-U-O-I-T on all accounts uh, for tech tips, events, when those happen, uh, important updates. And until then, we'll be back in a month. Later, y'all.